Good day, friends. This is Eve from The Empty Nester. How are you today? I'm going to be talking about self-watering buckets and um, saving and finding roadside weeds that are actually edible. And this one's completely surprising. This um, vine right here, my grandson brought home a flower. And as soon as I saw it, I knew it was a passion flower. And it's not actually native to our um, climate and um, yet it was growing on the roadside with weeds, flowers, and tons of poison ivy. Um, I went back and um, tried to um, dig it out. It, I was reading that it's a shallow root system but this goes all the way to the bottom of this bucket and only has a few um, tiny roots to it so somehow in our climate it had a really deep root system and just not a very many um, roots on the side so I brought it home and put it in this bucket and I read that um, they like up to you know lots of water but they don't like it standing water they like it draining I think it was like 35 inches of water that they required but um at first you can see how movable the soil is i put in a ton of water with no drain holes at first because it was in shock and wilting and i was afraid that i couldn't save it and look at it three days later it's thriving so today i'm taking my um cordless drill here and I drilled one hole in to start draining and it's about two inches up. Let me set the camera down and drill another hole over here. And <laughs> this one. is not drilling through for some reason. <laughs> so he knocked over the bucket. What is up with this? Let me turn it on. See if I have it in reverse. Yep, that's what it is. I had it in reverse. See the water weeping out now? I'm just putting two on that side and one on this side. That one is a little higher. So it's about two, two and a half inches up. And that way water will remain in the bottom. And that will make this bucket act like a self-watering container. Where this one is a, that I have stevia in. It, was like eight dollars at the store and down here you can see the water level um, is non-existent down in the bottom of the bucket so you would put more water in there to keep it going but from feeling the soil you can tell that it's plenty moist so um, I'm not sure with this one I've got a tube going into the bucket and then inside here see the screws right here I've taken just a regular household strainer put it in there like this and took screws to hold it put screws around the bucket in three or four places to hold the strainer in place and then filled it with sand and then um, a really rich compost soil I've got um, weeping willow transplants that I've sprouted the um, roots in water first and then placed them in here and then I've got a tomato cutting in here growing and then um, this one's not self watering it's just a regular plant but I can put it in a container with water and have it wick the water up from the sides. Um, 
let me take you over to the buckets. Or these are 50-gallon drums. There's one over there and one over here. I cut one drum in half, and in the bottom I've got a layer of sand, about let's say three inches of sand here, and then I drilled a hole in several places around the bucket for water to seep out. And then I took a piece of PVC pipe. It's going straight up and down here and then across. And it has holes on it along the side and the bottom. And that has water going into the sand. In the side over here, I put a juice jug where I can look down in there and see. If you look right now, it is moist in there, but it doesn't have any water standing. And yet, this has been in here, it's an asparagus plant. I started it from seeds, and it's been practically taking care of itself since 2009. I'm really happy with this container, and the plant seems to be really happy too. It's in the fern stage right now. If you see these little berries here. These are seed pods where it can start multiplying and growing more seeds. I don't um, actually weed it. it somehow the w whatever grows in here with it creates a mulch environment. But at the end of the summer here, I'm going to possibly take them and put them right into the ground and plant something else in the bags. In the um, topsoil bags here, the watermelon is doing excellent. I've got this um, soda container cut off, and then it's a spike. The bottom of the water, um, it feeds the, this is designed to feed the roots d deeply. On the side here, I've got a couple holes drilled. So that, because this is in a topsoil bag, the water will go out into the bag and below the roots, or below the bag. Because this watermelon um, may stay contained in the bag for a long time, and I don't want the ground underneath of it to go dry. So, in case the roots go down below the bag, the cherry um, 100 it's called sweet 100 tomatoes are in this topsoil bag and they're doing wonderful they're getting ready to flower and soon there's some more flowers soon they'll be um, having little cherry tomatoes the, this area too was topsoil bags that I started back in 2009 and I just left them in the ground here and added a couple more bags on top of them for the broccoli plants. And the broccoli is re really doing well. It's just with all the cold, the rain, the hot, the cold, you know, crazy weather this year. They, like this one here, bloomed prematurely and now it went to seed and now it's got side shoots coming out and forming minor heads. This one also it, um, it's like you have to pick the broccoli head as soon as you see it otherwise the next day it turns to flowers. So today I have to pick this one and this one and that one or all the little ones. This one's another one that went to seed. Otherwise, they'll turn into flowers. But somehow using the topsoil bags to plant in is kind of like a self-watering container also. It retains more moisture. And you can cover up the bags with either mulch or straw like I'm doing. And nobody will ever know that you're using topsoil bags to garden in. Over here, t I took um, this old wooden jug, or not jug, wooden barrel. It's fallen apart, and I just took 
Let me pull this out of here. I put them in there so we can mow the grass. All I did was take a um, trash bag and put it in here, and that way I can control the water level about, say, three, two, three inches up on the sides. I poked several holes in the um, plastic for this to drain and I can cover this up and kind of control the um, amount of water that gets into the bag because we it was like maybe three days in the last couple months that it didn't rain and this plant um, started out not so happy and now look at it it's flowering it's got a tomato the one that's beside of it is the same age and I took it and put it into an old Walmart bag and then put it into a container that used to be a self-watering bucket that I had. Drill the holes are, let's see, about that far, say two inches up. So there's about, say, two inches of standing. Oops, it's really breakable. So now I guess it's going to have not so much unless I fix that break. But this has been one wet root ball, you know, with all the rain. I've put some red plastic on top of it, trying to keep the water out of it. And you can see that it's not half the size and or half the health of that one. And it's got a smaller tomato and a bigger tomato. So at the moment, um, the Walmart bag isn't as... Um, happy as the plastic trash bag is. This is just an experiment. It can vary because I know people grow in grow bags and have really happy healthy plants. It's just in our weather conditions um, with all the rain um, I'm showing that it's better to contain the roots and keep most of the water out of it versus let all the water go into it. Most of these grow bags are successful in areas that are drier that need more water where we're in an area that has too much water and both of these plants so far are um, not getting blight and that's great because we constantly f are fighting blight in our area, early blight and they look happy, healthy and disease resist I don't know that they're resistant, but this is helping them to prevent disease. I've got them tied to the fence here so where they can climb and vine. This is um, Better Boy, I think, or Beef Master. I have to look it up. My memory's not so good. And this self watering container, um, I just have a, a couple of us or it looks like one, two asparagus ferns in here. And it's the same way. There's a Pepsi bottle in the corner here. And then the PVC pipe. There's sand in the bottom. And I'll take them apart in August and see what the root system is like and put them, those plants in the ground. But for now, I guess I'll get to planting. It's amazing, you know, keep your eyes open on the roadside for what is and possibly a free plant, an edible that you can bring to your garden. Like these here are, um, what do you call them, Jerusalem artichokes. I mail ordered these, but I know that we have these growing wild. I just um, wasn't up to searching for them. I'm going to have to get these guys in the ground also. I guess that I'll close for now and y'all have a wonderful day. Happy gardening.